Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Stanley Parable. Uh, I don't know what number episode this is, but I did go on the fandom page to figure out endings. Even now, Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? There was a computer, perhaps, and a painting. Was it a painting or a photo? He could no longer recall. Different dialogue. That's good. Good start. Again, with no motherfuckers with inputs. Excuse me. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yes, he did. Whee! Hope we see the adventure line again. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Hmm. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping he might come into a staircase, Stanley nope. walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? It's all because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <gasps> why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they yes, simply they were. repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. Daddy Thanos, snap. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying. And began to gently flow. Whoa, 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 okay. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And when he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. I speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. For certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him flow to make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he no, invited no, no, himself... No, 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 He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. 
Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began no, screaming. I wasn't Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Why is everything turning red? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Okay, that was the Mary Ellen one. Okay, so I found this other ending. I don't think anyone else has ever gotten it. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I guess I can't get that one. So... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find coming to a staircase. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Here's the door. I think I got this ending. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Okay, so this is 
one of the endings. Oh, just restarts. Oh, okay. This is the only thing to go to. Okay. Wait, what? The number is going up. It's so dark. Um... I can't wait to tell this story to my co-workers, Stanley thought. How amusing they'll find it. Oh, won't we all just laugh and laugh at the time I thought everyone had gone missing? I saw this on one of the endings. Oh, that's cute. This is fun. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. That makes sense. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, oh. hoping he might find an answer there. Huh. Oh. 
let's see if I can get, oh, whoops. Staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing. Okay. We already did that ending. So. Stanley thought to himself, am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? Whoa. How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. Oh my god. Shit! Fuck! Turn off all these computers. Off. 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 Okay. When Another Stan ending. Came to a set of two open doors, nope. Right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first time understood true happiness. Then the feeling went away, and he felt sad again. Yay! Then he came back, and lingered for a minute or two. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten up on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about? What? Really? Yay. I was in the middle right. of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Okay. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Okay, oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I wanted to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you.
do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? Here, yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> Okay, this is just weird. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just wanted to see what this room looked like. No, wait. Where are you going? Oh no! Stay away from those stairs! If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset! We'll lose all of this! Please, no, Stanley! Let me stay here! Don't take this from me! Worried there for a moment. Now, can we please get back to the other room? Yes. Oh. There. See? This is what you want. This is where we can both be happy. We really can. If we stop moving, we just have to stop moving. And let's go back. Stanley, go back. There's nothing good that can come from this. Go up one more time. No. No, no. What do, you, do you just not believe me? What can I say to convince you? Don't worry, narrator. We will go right back after this. Ah, ow! Stanley, go back to the other room. Can you do... Yes. Perhaps you can. Perhaps you finally see what I'm talking about. Oh. I know you'll see. You'll see that we can't be happy if we leave this place. You can see that, can't you? Okay, back. Back, here we go. Here we go to jump from no, the stairs. perhaps not. This is My what, God. number three? Is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Am I reading the situation correctly? Number three! Oof. Well, maybe you're just getting a kick. Do you actually want to stay alive? Or are you just teasing me? Of course I'm just teasing. I wanted us to be happy here, Stanley. I really did. I wish I still thought that was possible. Alright, fourth and final time. This time we die. <laughs> Fuck you, narrator. <laughs> Fuck you, third person percep per perception perspective. <laughs> Is it over? Dead. It's going to restart, isn't it? I'm going back.
Right. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I swear to God, 419. God! Damn it! No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. difficult to get. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map, until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Well, I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just hit escape and restart the game any old time you want. Like, right now. You could have done it just then. Now would also be an appropriate time to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires to restart the game. So, just to push the envelope, I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. Oh. There 
once was a man named Stanley, who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told, he was not very old and was quite particularly gangly. What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. He did it all day in a meaningful way. But his brain had long ceased to function. <laughs> Which is why he is in this parable. And lives an existence quite terrible. And if you are not strong and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. You too will become quite unbearable. Yay! Really, really wish I had an editor. this song before. I get stuck on. What's here that I'm getting stuck on? It's only on this one, I think. Okay, everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of The Stanley Parable. Uh, we did a lot in this episode. And, oof, that really hurts my eyes. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.